All right, so here's our uh, webinar outline. We're going to be looking a little bit at the TuneMaker 2 product intro, and then I'm going to be uh, demonstrating a little bit about the uh, avatar controller and the builder uh, for you guys. And then we're going to look at the difference between the G5 characters and the TuneMaker characters, or characters that are controlled by the avatar, uh, avatar controller, or character controller, rather. And then we're also going to look at uh, content creation options, and then we'll get to our live demo. Uh, in this live demo, we're going to have a little bit of a special uh, Halloween uh, demo for you guys, since uh, Halloween, I believe, is tomorrow or the next day, depending where you are in the world. All right, so uh, let's get into it. Uh, TuneMaker 2 product intro. So just a little bit of background. First of all, we had a uh, pack called TuneMaker 1 that we released earlier this year, and that pack had four unique character bases, uh, 25 outfits in total, and 33 facial features, 34 accessories. Quickly go to the product page, and I'll uh, show, this, show this to you guys here. Um, so you can, you can uh, purchase this in the content store, and you can take a look at all the different uh, types of bases we have here. Uh, athletic, Kirby, Stout, Junior, and you can create all these all, all sorts of different uh, characters from these bases as well. So, you know, here's the strong man. They look a little bit freaky without their eyes, um, but uh, these are the <laughs> these are the bases that you can uh, go from, and you can uh, add on all kinds of accessories to these characters. Um, we have all these facial features, um, any different kinds of eyebrows, um, accessories, and all that stuff. Uh, you can add a scarf, a uh, sleeve all sorts of stuff uh, onto your character to fully customize them and all that fun stuff. And you can create, you know, characters that look like anywhere from this character to this character, um, all sorts of different types of characters. And you can change and modify their clothing as well, uh, which I'll show you a little bit more about later. Uh, so let's go to the next uh, product here, which is the Avatar Toolkit. Uh, so the Avatar Toolkit is basically what you need to control, uh, what you need to create, uh, your own accessories, rather. Uh, you don't need the avatar uh, toolkit to control to, to be able to use these characters. Um, the avatar controller, which is on the right-hand side, that comes um, default with any ToonMaker toolkit. Uh, however, if you want to build your own uh, customizable accessories, which I'll show you in, in a moment in the live demo, then you'll want to uh, purchase this avatar toolkit, and that will allow you a lot of freedom to do that kind of stuff um, on your own. And so, of course, uh, one strong point to mention here is that the Avatar Toolkit uh, can control both character accessories and props. So you're not limited to the Toonmaker characters. You can actually use this unique uh, controller to actually puppet props. Um, so we'll go to the uh, product page here as well for this one. And you can see, here we go. Um, it explains the Avatar Builder right here, Avatar Controller. Uh, it comes with a number of dummy tools. Uh, so, for example, if you have a character with eyebrows, and you want them to be attached to the same dummy, you can use this uh, um, little cross here with two dummies on it, one for each eyebrow, and you can move them individually and all this stuff. And, um, you know, you can browse this page on your own time uh, and see if it's something that you'd be interested in. There's lots of tutorials available as well, um, uh, narrated by yours truly. I've done those tutorials for you guys, so you can check it out and learn more about uh, ToonMaker. And... Uh, Let's go to the next one. So then we had uh, ToonMaker 2. So ToonMaker 2 uh, is just recently released. 15 character bases, uh, 31 outfits, and 40 facial features, 25 accessories. So we'll go to this product page here. And there's tons and tons and tons of different uh, character bases uh, in this one here. You can see we have, um, in this one we only have the two actual uh, models, but we have a number of different uh, clone cloth bases here. So you can see there's different um, types of clone cloths uh, for the different characters. And basically what you do with those is you create your own clothing patterns and your own, um, your, your own styles basically for your characters to wear. And you can use those base templates um, to create those. And uh, there's like a number of different outfits as well. You know, we even have Captain Comic, uh, Linda, all kinds of different um, types of characters that you can create in different styles. And then facial features. This one has a bit more facial features. We have, uh, you know, oval ears, uh, something like that, um, different noses, a pointy nose, and different uh, hairstyles as well, and all this fun stuff. So, you, you know, you can basically just use your own uh, creativity to create all sorts of different characters, um, and you can also attach other icon accessories to these characters as well. So you're not only limited to the uh, Toon Maker characters. We have a uh, sexy-looking Bunny Bob right here. Um, that's one example of 
what you can create if, uh, you know, if you put your mind to it and if you're a little strange, like our artists are. So uh, that's, that, that's it for that uh, product page there. And let's go a little bit in more into exploring the uh, avatar controller and the avatar builder, uh, just to kind of briefly explain to you guys what it is. Um, so like I mentioned, the avatar controller is the controller panel that comes free with any Tomb Raider pack. So as long as you have a Tomb Raider pack, you're able to control all your character's accessories and all the accessories that are included um, with the pack, including the nose, eyebrows, eyes, everything like that. Um, that's what it means by pre-built here. So pre-built means uh, it's included in the Reillusion pack. Um, however, if you have the Avatar Builder, which comes with the Avatar Toolkit pack, this allows you to uh, you know, create your own um, props, uh, puppetable props. Uh, you can define the controls. And the dummy, there's dummy, tool, uh, dummy tools included, like I mentioned, uh, for structural control. So you can uh, you know, control different parts of the, uh, of the stuff, of the uh, props and everything like that. So let's take a look at what's the difference between G5 and Tomb Raider characters. <clears throat> uh, basically, G5 characters, um, they have uh, bone-driven facial animation. So you can see an example of Chuck here in 3D Exchange. Uh, there's all those white uh, you know, spears throughout his face there, white lines throughout his face. Those are just uh, facial bones. And a lot of our uh, G5 characters will use facial bones to uh, puppet their faces to create facial uh, animation. However, with the... Um, you can see here that uh, um, the G5 characters are also compatible with uh, facial puppet tools and all the other facial animation tools with an iClone. There's a number of different facial animation tools. You can see Chuck doesn't look too impressed there. Um, and make sure that you keep in mind that these G5 character faces cannot be used with the avatar controller. So the avatar controller is unique for these kind of Tomb Raider characters and different props. Now, for Tomb Raider character uh, bases, they have blend shape uh, mouth animations. Um, as you can see, the bases don't have any eyes, nose, or ears, because those are all accessories, but they do have a uh, mouth that is driven off of blend shapes. So the blend shape uh, mouth animation means the, the, the mouth animation is a lot smoother, it's a lot more uh, expressive, and there's a smoother transition between um, you know, one mouth shape to the other. Um, as opposed to the uh, bone-driven facial animation. So you can see here that uh, the mouth is compatible with all the motion tools. So you can also use the facial puppet tool uh, for the mouth, which I'll show you later on. Uh, you can also use lip syncing and everything like that. Uh, you can also take advantage of the avatar toolkit um, by attaching separate accessories to the face. Uh, so like I mentioned, you know, you can have ears, nose, eyes, eyebrows. Everything can be puppeted to your character's face. And there's tons of content uh, creation options here. Uh, like I mentioned before, you know, we have the Tune Maker 1 characters, Tune Maker 2 characters, all sorts of different combinations there. And also for prop props as well. I'll show you a couple of uh, project examples later on uh, with different puppet props and how you can uh, use those and modify those. Um, so that's about it for the PowerPoint. I think uh, we'll just move on to the live demo now. That's a really quick uh, you know, um, run through of the PowerPoint. But we do have a lot of stuff to go through that we, that we can go through in the live demo. Um, so if you do have any questions about you know, any of those products, feel free to check out the web pages um, that I showed before. Um, go to our website and just check out those pages. You can even just Google in you know, uh, Tune Maker 2 and then it'll come up the first result. Um, so let's get into our live demo. Now, uh, like I mentioned, we're going to do a little bit of a special live demo. Uh, for this uh, run through here because we are uh, very close to Halloween so I may have a little bit of a custom uh, Halloween project for you but we will run through all of the same procedures. Uh, if you want to check out this live demo you can check out our previous webinar uh, it's on our YouTube channel uh, about a month ago uh, we have a live uh, we have a video recording of the webinar that I did then uh, so we're gonna get into character construction just a little bit um, adding puppet and spring props to your character customizing the clothing and customizing the avatar shape. And then uh, character animation, which is the fun part. We'll uh, talk a little bit about facial animation with the avatar controller. I'm going to show you how to layer animation for each facial feature. So you can uh, puppet them all at the same time or you can puppet them separately, uh, each individual facial feature. Uh, we're also, we'll also look at lip sync animation and simple body puppet and body key animation. And then uh, prop composition. That's the first thing I'm going I'm to look at. Um, we're we're going to look at examples of uh, puppet props. 
Uh, I'm going to introduce the avatar builder to you and customize uh, some of the puppet props. So, and then we'll have a Q&A after that. So let's get into the live demo then. I'm just going to close this down. And I think I can uh, close down my browser uh, as well. And um, here's a little example of the project that I'm going to uh, show you how to create later. Uh, I'm just going to minimize these for now. Um, I'm going to show you this project uh, first off, and then I'm going to go into a couple of other projects and uh, just show you the capabilities. But this is kind of what you can look forward to. So this is something that I just made up uh, yesterday here. So I said, as the tool, not the ghoul, dummy. <laughs> oh, Fred, you're so freakishly funny. Howdy, Fred. Furball, how'd you do, Miss Skelly? You see that, Missy? More gremlins. There goes the neighborhood, I tell you. Although, they do make a mean snozberry pie. Okay, so uh, you can see the visuals in this are a little bit different from what you're used to, and this is because we've used a uh, tune shader, and I'll show you how to uh, use that in a moment. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about some camera work as well. Since we do have a lot of time for the live demo, I'll be able to show you guys quite a few things. But first of all, I'm going to go to our uh, projects tab here in the top, and I'm going to show you a couple of the avatar toolkit uh, packs right here. Now, uh, the first thing I'm going to show you is this... Uh, Material LED lamp. This is an example of how you can use the avatar toolkit uh, with props. Now I'm just going to just minimize this image layer here, or, or rather uh, make it invisible there. And you can see here we have this like LED lamp. And if I go to uh, my expressions, oops, hold on a sec here. Oh, this one seems to be, uh, I think I might have saved over this one. Oh, here we go. Okay, so. Right, so on this one, uh, when you're doing uh, puppet props with, uh, or if you're doing like the uh, puppeteering with the avatar controller with props, normally your stuff will be categorized in this other tab right here. Um, if you define it as a eye or a brow or an ear in the avatar builder, it will be under these uh, little tabs up here. But normally other stuff with props, you'll define it under others. And you can see if we go to our different props, there's all, uh, there's a light ball right here. And I can just select my prop, and I can go to uh, change it. Let's zoom in a little bit here, actually. That's a little better. And you can see if I move to different directions, different LED lights will light up here. And I can go to, like, a frown, like a happy face. And, uh, you know, I can transition between all of these different um, expressions right here. Now, the way to do that is we need to bring in our avatar builder, and I'll show you exactly uh, how you can modify each one of these little things here. Let's go to the set, and I'm going to go to the avatar builder, or rather, uh, avatar toolkit, volume two, and we have something called the avatar builder here. I'm just going to double click and bring that in. And now you can see we have the option to choose accessories, expressions, or alignment. And I'm going to just choose accessories right now, and I'm going to choose this accessory right here. Now, let's take a look at this panel here. It's a little bit compli complicated at first, but actually it's not too bad. And you can actually go into window mode here or GUI mode, and you can move your window around there. It's a little bit... Uh... So first of all, let's check out preview mode uh, right, right here on the top. If I select preview mode, you can see this is kind of previewing all the stuff that I'm creating. So what if, for example, I want when, my, uh, when, my mouse, when I move my mouse to this side... You can see he has kind of an angry expression. What if I wanted to like modify the lights that light up um, in that panel there? So now you can see he has those angry eye expression. Uh, if I wanted to change that, there's a quick thing I can do here. Um, all I need to do is select this two right here, and then I'm going to go into the material properties of my uh, panel here on the right-hand side. And you can see we have all of these different, uh, different materials right here. And each one of these materials represents one of these LED panels. So let's find out, let's just choose a random one, maybe 603. And let's find out if I choose glow, the glow map right here, let's bring up the strength. You can see 603 is that little panel, uh, little LED light down there. And I can choose to make that bright or make it dark, um, depending on, um, you know, what kind of expression I want. So if, for example, we just chose some random ones like uh, 603, 604, and uh, 602, and I don't know, maybe a few more, 402. I'm just choosing these at random, so I'm not trying to create any sort of facial expression here. I'm just going to show you. You can kind of imagine um, 
you know, what you could do here. It looks kind of like a weird sideways face there. So we'll just go right there and we'll just select apply. And now if I go into preview mode, you can see that I have that face instead of the previous face that I had. So this is how you can, uh, you know, use the uh, avatar builder to create your own custom uh, uh, puppetable props. And I can just, you know, transition between this and, and that now. So now we have a little bit of a different, you know, transition between all of these different elements here. And that's just an example of, uh, you know, what the avatar builder is, is used for there. So let's try another different project here. I'll just show you one more quick example uh, before we get into our live demo here. So I'm going to go into project. And let's just try the, um, let's see here. I think we have this group animation one here. Yeah, this one's kind of fun. So we have this uh, amoeba one right here. Um, don't want to save this project for now. And this is the one that I uh, demonstrated in the uh, last month's webinar. Um, you can see this one looks kind of cool. It's very, uh, has a very sci-fi type feel. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, make this image layer invisible here. Um, if you want to make stuff invisible, by the way, you can just, you know, click on this um, checkbox down here. Any of the items, you can do that. Uh, so here we go. We have this avatar controller. And again, if I uh, go to, uh, let's see here, this weird looking, uh, well, maybe I need to, oh. oh, we have the image layer still there. Okay, sorry. All right, so let's select our stuff. We have the image layer selected. Maybe I'll just delete that, actually. There we go. Now we should be able to select our items in our scene. If I can get to it. There we go. Okay. Now we have this, and I need to find my avatar puppet controller right here. If you ever decide to close your uh, puppet controller, you can simply right-click on it, and go script and go avatar controller and it'll pop right back up. And now we have it uh, selected. Before I had my image layer selected, sorry there guys, so you couldn't actually, you know, puppet anything. And you can see we have a camera depth of field effect on as well. So if I, uh, you know, zoom in, it'll focus on different things. If I zoom out, it'll, uh, um, you know, things in the background will be out of focus. Let's just take a quick look at what I can do with this avatar controller. So again, we'll go to others right now. And you can see that if I move it to different uh, parts of the avatar controller, these spheres here begin to uh, pulsate and kind of move around. And uh, you can see all the other ones are disabled. We don't have anything for expressions because this is a prop, of course. So I can move this around and make these shapes pulsate. If I wanted them to, uh, you know, have a different sort of, uh, different sort of pulsation here, uh, I can go to my avatar builder down there. Let's right click, script and avatar builder. And I'm going to just minimize the controller for now. And we'll just select this guy right here and we'll select accessories. And there we go. So I'm going to go into window mode here again. So let's zoom in a little bit on this one particular. I'm going to take off the camera effect right now, the depth of field effect here, just so we can concentrate more on the uh, What's going on here? Okay, there we go. So now here I have the option. If I go into preview mode, you can see the different, you know, ways that this shape is moving around. So if I go up there and here, it'll stretch out in different ways. Let's move a bit to the side here. And you can see that there's all sorts of different bones inside of this sphere. So this is not just a sphere. It's not just a mesh. There's actually a few bones inside of this sphere. So let's say, for example, I wanted this um, mesh here. Uh, maybe, for example, when I move down to the bottom left of my avatar controller, I wanted it to kind of have a really funky looking shape. So let's select the three there, and now you can see this is the current uh, assignment uh, for the shape. Let's go to the uh, select the character, or select the character, select the prop there, and we need to go into, where is it here? Do, 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 edit animation layer, there we go. And you can see we have all these different bones. Um, I'm going to bring everything over here a little bit more. Let's uh, just bring it over there. Okay, so if I select these different bones, uh, you can see that uh, if I press the W hotkey, that will mean that uh, this is my transform gizmo. And I can kind of stretch this bone out like that, make a big lump on my sphere. So if I select like bone 11, uh, you can see I selected that bone over there, and I can just stretch that one out right there. 
And maybe I want this one here. You can also select it from the uh, scene view as well in the editor mode. And I can just, you know, move that one in like that. And, you know, we can have fun all day just stretching things around. And so that's going to be my new uh, shape for uh, the bottom left of my avatar controller. And I can just go ahead and press apply. And then go into preview mode and zoop, there's my shape. So it'll blend into all the other shapes there. So those are just a couple of cool examples of how you can use the, uh, the avatar builder um, to customize uh, your props, uh, how you can puppet your props. And you can just imagine all the different possibilities for this. Um, uh, these are just a couple of examples that we've, uh, we've created. But you can uh, feel free to uh, you know, create your own examples and everything with your own props. As long as you have bones in your props, um, or, you know, you can also puppet materials like I showed you in the first example. There's all kinds of cool stuff you can do. All right, so that's about it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move on to the, uh, the ToonMaker 2 uh, project now. I just wanted to show you a couple of the possibilities for the Avatar Toolkit and the Avatar Builder. So, again, let's go to Project. I'm going to load up my custom project here. It is Webinar Halloween. And, again, I'll show you this um, project one more time here. And you can also check it out. Um, I'm going to go to YouTube here. And I'm going to put a, a link for you guys. I'm just going to, uh, I just uploaded it to my personal channel here. So I'm going to put a link for you guys here. Um, so you can watch it. Um, maybe it's a little bit laggy for you guys. Uh, let's just uh, copy this link here. I believe that copied. Oh, there we go. Okay copy. And I'm just going to uh, post this in the uh, chat uh, window here. So if you guys want to, you know, check that out on your own time, you can go ahead and check that out. Uh, but that's going to be the project that we're going to create. Um, I did cheat a little bit. I did start, um, I set up the, I made the set and everything like that. I uh, assembled all the props and everything. And I'll show you a little bit of uh, where all this stuff came from. So let's just play it back one more time. So I said, that's the tool, not the ghoul, dummy. <laughs> oh, Fred, you're so freakishly funny. Howdy, Fred. Furball, how do you do, Miss Skelly? You see that, Missy? More gremlins. There goes the neighborhood, I tell ya. Although, they do make a mean snozberry pie. All right, so there's a few things we're going to do. I'm going to load up this project here, which is the... Um, this project here without all of the animation, without uh, all of the uh, backgrounds and everything like that, and the camera work. And we're going to go through this step by step. So I'm going to show you how you can use the Toon Maker, um, how you're going to create your own characters and customize them, and then create a kind of a cool cartoon-like scene. So we're going to minimize the builder and everything right now. And you can see here we just have this uh, scene, and we have the two base characters in the middle of the scene. Now, this is a scene that's available on our uh, city marketplace. If you go to, uh, um, doo -doo -doo -doo, there we go, city.reillusion.com slash market slash iClone, we have all sorts of different uh, cool Halloween stuff you can, you can buy here. Uh, you can see right here we have these micro monsters combo. That's the two monsters that, that kind of uh, flew by, and this is by a developer called BitGem. I'm also going to be using um, some Toon Maker 2 uh, content from Allie. Uh, um, you can visit her theme store, Fashion Alley, over here. There's all sorts of cool stuff available in the marketplace. Excuse me, and a lot of our developers have, you know, created stuff from the Toon Maker 2 characters. So there's lots of options for you there if you don't want to customize your own. Um, and, yeah, that's basically uh, what we're going to do. This, this whole uh, pack here, um, all of the buildings you see surrounding our characters, this is from another developer named uh, Sochin, and uh, you can check that out. Just type in Halloween Village in the marketplace, and you should be able to find that. I think uh, if I just type in Halloween, whoops, you should be able to uh, find that. Yeah, there we go. So Cartoon Halloween Farm right here. That's the one that I'm um, using in this project. So let's go back to uh, iClone, and let's get started on the animation. So you can see here, uh, first of all, uh, what we have in the scene. I have this little pink uh, path. Uh, this is a path right here, and it's kind of just going up and down uh, through my scene. And this is the path that the monsters are following. So you can see they're just kind of going along the path. And 
we have these two monsters kind of flying along. Hell, are you afraid? And they, they already have their animation. So uh, I'm going to keep their animation for now. Um, but if you wanted to create a path, you know, you can uh, go up to uh, animation and path and then just create a path. You can kind of string it along like that and then right click and that'll be a path right there. I'm just going to undo that. And what you want to do is have your characters. Uh, right here, I have a little bit of a interesting thing going on here. You can see that if I uh, select my, go into my props here, or if I press Control D rather, there's a little sphere that appears in between these two characters. And that is a dummy uh, sphere. Uh, if I press Control D, that'll make all my dummies disappear, and therefore my sphere will disappear. If I go into props, you can see I have way down here, I have ball 001. And that is the dummy. Um, control D. And the, the reason it's a dummy is because I went up here to the modify panel and I, I clicked on set as dummy. It's just a way you can kind of create simple dummies. And the reason I have that is because I want these two characters to be traveling along at the same time. And so if, if I select these characters, you can see this one right here, um, there should be a link. The character is linked, yep, there we go, linked to ball 001. So it's linked to that, and so is this character. They're both linked to ball 001. So basically, wherever the ball goes, that's where they will go. And we have this ball kind of going along the path. So let's take a look at the ball. And the ball, if I move down here, you can see it has path and I've selected the path. And if I move along the timeline, maybe to about here, you can see the position goes to 5.77. And the further along I go on the timeline, the further along my characters will go along the path. So that's just some quick, you know, path animation for you. And you can totally change that. You can modify, uh, you know, your paths, and you can switch from one path to another. But that's just your very, very, very simple um, path animation. And now, remember, it's the ball that's moving along that path, and the two characters are linked to that ball. So it's just a kind of a quick fix for, uh, you know, creating two, uh, kind of creating a path for two, two separate characters. Let's uh, make that invisible again. And the other thing you might be wondering is we have a different background. The background is all gray and, and, uh, and normal. What I want to do to change that is go to my stage, and we have an option called 2D Background. And you can set a color for your background. If I want my color to be yellow, that's really uh, bright. And uh, we can do a blue one as well. All sorts of different colors. We can also press Control G to take off that grid. And you can have something like that, which would be nice. Uh, if I press Control G, that'll bring up my grid again. Uh, but the uh, example that I used here is I use an image background. So I'm just going to select uh, Active here and double-click on this swatch. And we have this nice night sky, moon, night um, image right there. It's going to open that up. And you can see we have that, um, you know, in our background right there. And it's kind of, uh, it's very suitable for this background. I believe the image is about 1920 by uh, 1080 or something like that. Um, and you can also choose different display modes as well. You can tile it, uh, which doesn't really matter. Um, you can fit it, which in this case we don't really want to do because that's uh, not covering our entire background. So I'm just going to stretch it, stretch it a little bit. And we are good to go there. We have that nice background. And then we also want to try and get the, uh, the uh, tune shader in. But I'm going to talk about the tune shader in a little, a little bit later. Uh, first, what I want to talk about is these props right here. We can choose this, this tree right here. And take a look at this tree. We have this tree, and we have these jack-o'-lantern uh, pumpkins um, hanging from the tree. Now, the jack-o'-lanterns seem to have a little bit of a glow on them. And let's take a look at why that is. And this is kind of the same procedure that you use for customizing your Tune Maker characters as well. So I'm going to go to uh, down here to Materials. And we have Material 67, we have Material 68. And Material 68, if you, if you look at this Diffuse channel here, you can see that that looks more like the pumpkin that we're looking at. And we have this kind of cool little glow map down here. So if I take this glow map and I decrease the strength, you can see that my jack-o'-lanterns will go dark and we don't have a glow anymore. So let's take a look at that. We can bring it up like that. And there you go. So that's what the uh, glow map is. 
Now, a little cool, uh, we may have time to uh, learn how to, how to create a glow map. If you ever have something that you want to glow like this, uh, simply go to your diffuse channel. This is just a quick fix for this. Um, and go to launch. This is kind of a cool, quick example of how to create your own, uh, your own glow channels. Because um, I think it's useful for things like, like Halloween props. And we will talk about the uh, Toon Maker characters in just a moment. Uh, they're, very, they're, very, they're quite simple to assemble. So um, what I'm going to do here is just go um, in Photoshop. I have my Diffuse map launched. We can just go to uh, over here, Quick Selection Tool. I'm going to try and select his eyes. I'm going to do a quick glow map right here. Um, you know, this is a, kind of a very rough example here. Um, using this Quick Selection Tool to select the parts that I want to glow. And there's the nose. And, oops, we don't want to do that. Let's just undo that. There we go. All right, that'll be good enough for now. Uh, we can maybe, you know, if we have more time, go into uh, selecting the entire glow map. So what I want to do is I want to create a new layer. And I'm going to press Control-X on this layer. That's going to cut everything out. And then I'm going to go to this layer, make this one invisible, and Control-V. And that's going to paste this um, jack-o'-lantern face um, onto my layer. And what I can do is I can move this down a little bit um, to where the other one is. We have to kind of align them um, because we want the maps to be exactly the same. So there we go. And we can make this one invisible again. And then I have a black fill. I'm just going to go ahead and fill in the black background right there. And then if I want, oops, actually let's do something else before that. Um, I'm going to Control-Z that. I'm going to go up to uh, Layer here, and we're going to go to New Adjustment Layer, and Brightness and Contrast. We can make it a little bit brighter if we want. You know, if we want the glow to be a little bit stronger or a little bit um, lighter or darker, you can do that. So I'm going to adjust the brightness up a little bit. And then let's go back to this layer here and fill in the black, and we can go File, and you can Save As, and we can save it to our desktop as, you know, Test, test Glow or something like that and save it. Oops, we want to, of course, save it as a JPEG, sorry. Um, save as uh, test glow and save it as a JPEG because Icon will support the JPEG format for all the maps. So let's go ahead and save that. And then if I go back into Icon, we can just take this glow map and we can uh, trash it, we can delete it, and then we can select it again. Let's go to our desktop and we have that test glow. And there you can see that's the new glow map that I just created. So that's kind of a really quick and cool way to create your own glow maps um, in, in iClone. You can, of course, you know, make it brighter, make it dark, or whatever. So that's about it for the uh, glow maps and all that stuff. Let's get into our Toon Maker characters. So we have these um, dummy guys just sitting here doing nothing right now. And what I want to do is kind of customize them. So let's take this character here and let's give, uh, let's make it the female character. So back in Avatar... Uh, I want to go to upper body here, um, and we have a Toon Maker 2 folder. There's Chubby and Stretchy. So Stretchy, I'm just going to give her this dress right here, and the dress is fine. Let's go select some shoes. We have uh, Toon Maker shoes. Uh, let's give her the nice classy shoes here. And you can see those feet will change. And then we can go to the uh, face, and let's uh, take a look at the face. Now... Um, the face, all the stuff will be in accessories. They're not going to be in, uh, you know, hair or anything like that. So if we go to accessories, we have this Toon Maker 2 folder right here. Um, you know, we have ears. We can give her some, uh, I don't know, we'll give, us some, give her some oval ears. I'm just kind of winging this. Uh, uh, let's go to eyebrows and uh, let's go to eyes actually first. And we'll give her these uh, minimal eyes. I think that looks good. And, of course, with all of these different accessories, you can totally customize them. You can totally, uh, you know, change the colors and everything like that, which I'll show you in just a moment. I'm going to just construct my character first. Let's give her that funky-looking hairstyle that she had before. So we have these locks. Now, take a look at this. Uh, these, this hair actually has, um, if you look at the icon, take a quick look at the icon, it has a spring on the bottom left corner there. And that spring means that it's spring-enabled. So when you kind of move your character around, um, your hair will kind of bounce around with it. So we can just choose this ponytail as well. And I'll show you a better example uh, with our characters. I think we have HD 
HD lighting on. So let me turn this off for a sec because it's kind of bright. There we go. All right, there we go. That's a little bit easier to look at. Um, and let's go to our character's nose. And I believe I gave her the aristocrat nose. There we go. And there's our character complete. Now, if I want to change the color of her dress, I can do that as well. If I select the uh, stretchy, and I believe we need to go to uh, the dress right here. It should be all okay, avatar, right? And then we need to go here on the left-hand side, our character selected. And we need to go to do, 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 stretchy. Where's my materials? Oh, let's just choose an avatar proportion first because I want to show you exactly how to uh, change the avatar proportion as well. So if I go to avatar proportion here, let's take a look at all the stuff we can do with this. Uh, I'm going to go to maybe just choose the body for now. And if I choose lock XYZ, I can make the character larger. I can give her <laughs> make her a giant or I can make her a little bit smaller as well. And, uh, you know, that's all the fun stuff you can do with the body. Uh, if you want to resize the entire body, or if you want to, you know, take, for example, uh, take the arms. If we go to select the upper arms, select mirror, we can make those larger as well. We can give her some uh, really strange looking arms. It's probably not what you'd want to do for this character. And, of course, you can also just, uh, you know, choose to only increase the length. If you want the arms to stretch out, make her some kind of mutant, you can uh, do that as well. You can have all sorts of fun, you know, with your character give her some long legs, um, and all that stuff. Um, so that's kind of how you can uh, modify the avatar proportion. And let's move on to our uh, chubby-looking character here. And for this chubby-looking character, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm just going to choose the upper body here, and we're going to go to uh, chubby. And I'm just going to go ahead and actually I'm going to go over to the materials here on our character. So you can see we have our chubby character, and he has nothing on right now, and his RL upper uh, material here on the right is just a simple pink diffuse map. Now let's go over to load material here. And what I'm going to do is we have to go to our materials library. And I'm going to go to Toonmaker 2. And we have upper. And I'm going to choose chubby. And you can choose, you can see we have a number of options here for the chubby upper. And these are the materials that I can apply. And this NB, this stands for no base. So if your character does not have a base, so if he's naked, like that, like this character is, you can just choose chubby upper, no base, and you can see, bam, we have a shirt, but now we need some pants, so let's get down to the lower body, and let's do the same thing. Let's choose this one, except let's go to Toon Maker 2, and let's choose lower, and chubby, and let's make sure we, oops, take a look at the icons here. Maybe we can give him these uh, worker pants, and that'll be fine. And there you go, so now we have uh, our character there, and, for example, if I wanted to change the color of his jeans, maybe to a darker color, I can select the diffuse map for the jeans, and I can, you know, decrease the brightness like that. I can change the hue. We can give him some, some nice green jeans like that. So there's a number of different ways you can modify your character, um, you know, simply by just using the uh, values inside iClone. And um, let's go ahead and give him some shoes as well. So we'll go to shoes, and we'll give him some uh, uh, chubby shoes. There we go. And then let's give this guy some uh, facial parts as well. So I'm going to go to uh, accessories, and we'll give him a button nose. We'll give him some butterfly ears here. And some eyebrows. I don't remember which. Oh, I'll give him the drop eyebrows, right? And he needs some eyes as well. So let's give him these partial eyes. Let's say, for example, I think those eyebrows are a little bit too small. Let's, choose, let's change that. So let's go zoom in here. I'm going to use the R hotkey and scale them up. Make them a little bit bigger. I can use the W hotkey and move them up a little bit. There you go. So then we have, it uh, looks a little bit better. And let's go to our uh, Tune Maker 1 pack here. And let's go ahead to uh, accessories, I believe. Oh, no, hair. I'm going to give him, like, the, uh, the balding hair right here. So now because Toon Maker 1 characters and Toon Maker 2 characters are a little bit different, if I, uh, you know, select this character and I uh, select the hair piece right here, if I double-click the hair piece and that loads up, 
you'll see that it will it'll kind of go in the middle of his head. It'll kind of be a little bit back there because this is made for athletic guy who has a smaller head. So we can kind of move it back up, and we can move it forward a little bit, and we need to scale this up a little bit. So again, use that R hotkey and scale it up. Oops, we need to go into the uh, hair piece actually here and scale the dummy itself. I do believe. There we go. All right, so let's zoom in a little bit on his head there so we can get this placement of the hair correct. There you go. That looks fine and dandy that way. All right, good enough. So he has that kind of, uh, you know, balding hair right there. All right, so our characters are complete. Let's go into animating them now. Um, and I'm just going to give a simple animation to both of these characters. I'm going to go to animation, uh, motion, motion puppet, and I'm going to animate the character's uh, walk. So in, in the motion puppet, we have a basic walk. Uh, we have a move section here. I'm just going to choose this female basic walk, and I'm going to give my characters a walk. So I'm going to go ahead and record this the entire time. And you can see my character will go to the side. That's not a problem. We can fix that oh, later on. Right. So we're going to have the character walk for the duration of the project. And again, here you can modify the walks with all these different slider values and everything like that. And let's just go ahead and go back to frame one. And we'll select our male character now and do the same thing. So we're just going to give him a uh, basic male walk and go ahead and record that. So we have our characters walking along. Howdy, friend. And what we're going to do after this is some quick facial animation. And then I'll talk a little bit about the uh, tune shader. So a couple more seconds left. And there, we're good to go. All right, so let's uh, press stop. Get out of here. And we need to rotate these characters a little bit to the side. So let's uh, select our character. I'm going to select actor here. And let's move him to 270 on the z-axis. There you go. Let's get things exact here. All right. So they are now facing this direction. And we want them to walk forward. So a simple way to make, a simple way to make these guys walk forward is... Let's go to the very end of our project, um, about here. And let's control, and I'm going to select both these characters by holding the control key and selecting, and then press the W hotkey. And I'm going to move them all the way to the end, to about there. And then that's just a simple walk. There you go. So we have our characters walking along, just like this. And they're going to pass these... Uh, monsters here and they're going to talk to them. So we need to give these characters some uh, lip syncing now. So let's go ahead and select my male character and I'm going to go ahead and go into uh, animation and facial animation and I'm going to open up a vocal track which I already have recorded. This is actually my own voice uh, so I just kind of modified it a little bit. Actually every character in this um, little demo here is my own voice. So first of all he says that joke tool not ghoul. So so I said, pass the tool, not the ghoul, dummy. Okay. And then we want our female character to say, oh, Fred, you're so funny. Uh, so we have freakishly funny. <laughs> oh, Fred, you're so freakishly funny. All right. And then at this point, our characters are going to pass the uh, the ghouls, and they're going to say, howdy, Fred. So we'll just play. Howdy, Fred. And then Fred's going to say, uh, uh, for ball, Miss Kelly, Miss Skelly. For ball, how do you do, Miss Skelly? And he walks a little bit on, and then he talks about gremlins. So we're gonna open up that gremlin track. Uh, more gremlins. You see that, Missy? More gremlins. There goes the neighborhood, I tell you. And then he pauses for a little bit. And he says, although they do make good snozberry pie. Although they do make a mean snozberry pie. Okay. So there we have all of our uh, our vocal animation in there. Let's go ahead and add some uh, facial animation as well. So what I can do here is I can create a quick camera. I'm going to go to add camera. And I'm just going to call this camera. Um, 
let's go to uh, camera down here. I'm going to rename it. I'm going to rename this uh, facial puppet. And I'm going to go into the uh, avatar toolkit right here. And I'm going to select my character. And you can see when my characters are selected, let's me to uh, went to other here. Avatar controller, there we go. Not the avatar toolkit. They look very similar. So here you can see that I can modify, uh, I can actually puppet my character's face. All these accessories, you can puppet um, at the same time because they've been defined already. If I, want to, if I want to puppet them separately, I can go to the eyes. I can move the eyes around separately, uh, up and down. You can also blink the eyes. This character has a kind of a weird blink. Um, but then if you go to eyebrows, you can do the same thing with the eyebrows and the ears. So you can puppet these separately. Uh, since we're kind of uh, short on time, I'm going to puppet them all together uh, real quick here. And with this camera, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my camera, facial puppet camera, and I'm going to show you how you can quickly link a camera to your character. So I'm going to go over here in the camera, and I'm going to go to, uh, where we go, link, pick parent. I'm going to pick my character. And if you, you can see now, so I said, as the tool, not the cool dog. If I play back, it's linked to his spine, so it's going to kind of follow his spine rotation. So I'm going to go into this little dot, dot, dot um, section here and select bone root. And bone root is just the base of the character. So if I press OK now, so I said, as the tool, not the ghoul dummy. You can see the follow is the camera movement is a lot smoother. So let's make this avatar controller out of the way here. Let's select our male character first. Let's give him some expressions. So you can say, uh, all right, so we'll just give him some random expressions, and we'll go ahead and record that. So I said, as the tool, not the ghoul dummy. <laughs> oh, Fred, you're so freakishly funny. Howdy, Fred. Furball, how do you do, Miss Skelly? You see that, Missy? More gremlins. There goes the neighborhood, I tell you. Although, they do make a mean snozberry pie. Okay, and so let's go ahead and uh, back on that. And if we play back... I said, as the tool, not the ghoul, dummy. All right, let's just do a quick facial animation for uh, Linda, I believe we called her. Linda or Lily, I don't know. Okay, so let's go ahead and record that as well. Record something for her. So I said... As the tool, not the ghoul, dummy. <laughs> oh, Fred, you're so freakishly funny. Howdy, Fred. Furball, how do you do, Miss Skelly? You see that, Missy? More gremlins. There goes the neighborhood, I tell you. Although, they do make a mean snozberry pie. Okay, so then we have both of our character spatial animations completed. You can see how fast that was. And what I want to do uh, as a last animation here is I want to go into my uh, preview camera here. And with the preview camera, I'm going to zoom all the way back here. And you can see that we, have, we want to have our characters' uh, heads move. So when our character passes uh, these two monsters, he's going to kind of move his head to the side. And there's a very easy way to do this um, using the uh, motion tool called Direct Puppet. So now, the reason I can't use Direct Puppet with the camera here is because the Direct Puppet tool won't work with this uh, camera movement. So I'm just going to go ahead and select the character's head and primary rotation. So I said, Pass the tool, not the ghoul, dummy. You can see I can move my character's head around uh, almost like he's at a rock concert. So if I select primary rotation, let's go ahead and do this. So I said, Pass the tool, not the ghoul, dummy. <laughs> oh, Fred, you're so freakishly funny. Howdy, Fred. Furball, how do you do, Miss Skelly? You see that, Missy? More gremlins. There goes the neighborhood, I tell you. Although, they do make a mean snozberry pie. All right, so we're uh, basically done with the uh, head animation there. And if I go back to frame one, let's take a quick, uh, quick look at uh, what I did there. Let's go to add camera. Oops, sorry, no, add not add camera. We'll go to the facial puppet camera there. And if I scrub along the timeline, let's minimize this right now, you can see now when he's talking to the character, oh, he should be moving his head to the side. Uh, I don't think we have time to do that again. I think it just kind of didn't record. Uh, motion, direct puppet. Let's try that one more time. I'll just show you a quick example. Preview camera. I need to record that. I'm not sure if I recorded or previewed last time. I must have just previewed it. So we have our character, direct puppet. 
And I'm going to just do a quick one here. All right, so it seems like we lost the audio there uh, for some reason, but I'm going to sh I just want to show you how the character's head turns. Okay, there we go. So let's go to our uh, facial puppet camera right here. And the camera has decided to move on me as well. It's okay. Let's move it back over here. So you can see now the character's head is kind of moving to the side, and he's kind of just you know nodding at the uh, female character and everything like that. And that's basically it for the animation. I'll load the other project up uh, later again so you can see the final project. But uh, what I want to show you how to do first is just a simple tune shader. So I want to give it that refined appearance that I uh, showed you in the uh, previous example. So let's go to Stage and Atmosphere. And this is where you can have a lot of uh, cool visual effects. So if you have our HDR effect, you can see that we can, we can kind of create a uh, bloom scale. Take a look at the moon in the background there. If I uh, increase this bloom scale, you can see almost everything that has a light value in my scene will brighten up. And I can, uh, you know decrease the brightness threshold to whatever I want. You can also change the type of glare uh, to something else, uh, something like a snow cross. Um, and you can have different types of, uh, of glare. We don't want to have that uh, too much. Uh, let's just keep it a little bit low, maybe something like that, just a slight glow um, for those things. Uh, but what I do want to do is go down here, and we have an option for tune shader. So I'm going to select my tune shader here. And you can see right away we have a, kind of a cool... Uh, tune shader effect, and this is really useful for characters like these uh, Tune Maker characters. Uh, now here I can choose to increase the edge width for my characters and increase the edge intensity, so I can have a result like that, uh, which may not be what we're looking for in this project. You know, you can decrease the edge width, have a really dark um, edge width, but a really uh, or a dark intensity but really uh, thin edge width, or I can decrease the intensity to something so that it's almost not even there. Uh, also, if I want, I can change the silhouette edge from color to texture color, and that'll just kind of take away that edge altogether. But I think for this project, I like the edge width maybe to be about 2, and the edge intensity somewhere around here, so we get that nice black outline. And then also, uh, let's take a look at this character's face right here. Um, I can increase, uh, if I move this slider here, you can decrease the amount of darkness uh, in the shader as well. So if I want to have it more dark, I can increase this level right here, or I can adjust this light level to have less light or more light. So you can kind of you know mess around with these effects, um, get some really cool results, um, and that's that's basically your tune shader right there. And of course, you can uh, choose to have uh, image-based lighting as well, which is uh, something we'll save for another webinar. So that's about it. Um, I'll go load up the uh, original project since we lost the audio in this project. I might have accidentally pressed something on my keyboard. Um, but let's just load this up one more time, and I will show you the final project. And then we'll get into our Q&A session. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to put them in the question section right now. We'll play this back one more time, and then I will get on to the question section. All right, there we go. So I said, as the tool, not the ghoul, dummy. <laughs> oh, Fred, you're so freakishly funny. Howdy, Fred. Herbo, how do you do, Miss Skelly? You see that, Missy? More gremlins. There goes the neighborhood, I tell you. Although, they do make a mean snowsberry pie. All right, so there you go. This entire project, it looks fairly good, but actually this entire project took maybe a couple of hours to do. Um, so, you know, we don't, have, we don't have a couple of hours in this webinar, um, but all the camera work and everything like that was basically done in, in a couple of hours. Um, so I guess that's about it for our live demo. I'm going to go uh, open up the questions tab right here now, and I'm going to uh, bring it up, and we're going to answer some, uh, some Q&A from you guys. Looks like we have quite a few questions here. So uh, let's get started. Um, okay. Um, Dave Sibald says, is this Mac compatible? Uh, unfortunately, we don't have iCone for Mac yet, um, so we won't be able to use this on Mac. You'll have to use a sort of a boot camp thing uh, currently. Uh, we do have other products for Mac, including uh, Crazy Talk Animator, uh, which is our 2D software. 
and uh, Crazy Talk 7, which is the facial animation uh, software. So those are the only ones we have currently for Mac. Um, so sorry about that, guys. Uh, we're looking to get uh, iClone Mac in the future, uh, but not sure when. Uh, I can't make any promises here. Uh, Albert Baldwin asks, uh, will there be an ability to customize the Tune Avatar facial features in a future update? Well, since the facial features are actually accessories, you can actually make your own facial features. Um, and a lot of our, uh, a lot of our um, uh, developers have done that. Uh, I'll show you a quick example here, which is uh, I always like to use. Um, we have one character, which is from our developer, Allie. I'm going to select our uh, character here, the female character. I'm going to change her into something totally different. So let's go down here to Toonmaker 2. And you can see we have this. Easter bunny uh, and a reindeer. So say for example it's Halloween but you know maybe the Easter bunny is lost in a different season. You know we can just select this rabbit here and this is a rabbit that's again like I mentioned available in the marketplace uh, from our developer Ali and you can see that uh, all of the facial features here have been customized and these are all created by, uh, by Ali. And if I play it back So I said as the tool, not the cool dummy. <laughs> oh, Fred, you're so freakishly funny. Okay, so you can have, just replace the character with the exact same animation, the exact same everything, uh, but just replace it with this rabbit character, which is kind of cool. It's one of the fun features of iClone. You can just replace characters with the same animation uh, really quickly. Uh, let's just bring this question tab out again. Oops. Oh, there we go. All righty. And let's get to more questions. So uh, will iClone 6 support PBR channels such as Metallic and Roughness? What is the material channel pipeline for PBR? Uh, yep, that's uh, another question from Albert. Uh, iClone 6 will support this. So uh, we have um, substance rendering technology available in iClone 6. So you can look forward to having a lot more freedom with your, uh, with your textures. Um, and Frederick asks, uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh, okay, and Jarmo is asking here, uh, where do you get the artwork, uh, the houses, using the background? Uh, like I mentioned, you can find all this stuff in our city marketplace. Um, just go to uh, city.reillusion.com slash market slash iClone. Um, you can also use Crazy Talk for the Crazy Talk stuff. Um, you can find all this cool stuff uh, in the marketplace. Um, I really recommend you check it out. There's a lot of uh, very inexpensive um, props. There's also a lot of freebies available as well.